Hello to everyone. Two years ago, I have published a video about how to create a spatial table, using the version 5.7, of my SQL. I decided to update that explanation to the version 8.x, because there is a little big difference among the two versions, on the way how to do this task. So, this means that a user can create a spatial table with the MySQL, version 8.x, that can be used inside the QGIS. The task is relatively simple and similar as creating a shapefile layer with QGIS. So, this task will not be unfamiliar to a QGIS user. Just to remind, the spatial tables are based on the shapefile's characteristics, where each shapefile only allows the storage of one of the three types of geometries, polygons, lines, or points. Because the procedures are similar, and the difference are only in the moment when I choose the geometry type of the table, in this video I will only demonstrate how to create a spatial table to store polygons. Let's see, step by step, how to accomplish the task. To do this demonstration, I open the MySQL Workbench and I enter in the local instance. Then I click the create a new table button. In the window that opens, I'm going to assign a name to the new table. For this exercise, I will name it as demo underscore spatial table. Then, on chart set, I choose the default chart set suggestion. This will attribute the chart set that are defined in your MySQL. In this case, it's the UTF-8. On engine, select one of the two types that support geometry storage in ODB or MyISAM. For this example, I'll choose the first one, in ODB. On next step, I will add columns to this table. So, on column name, I put the name that I want for each columns. On data type, I will register the type of data or information that the column will accept or store. And on storage, I will register the characteristics that each column will assume. The first column that I will create is the one that a shapefile has by default with the name ID, MDF underscore ID, or OGR underscore FID. I will name it as OGR underscore FID. Then, I will assign the data type as integer. This column will work as a unique identifier for each geometry that will be stored in the table and this is particularly important. So, because of this in the storage types I'll activate the following, primary key, not null, unique and auto increment. As a note, when I am creating a new shape file inside the QGIS, by default, it adds a field, named ID. This one that I am adding has the same function. The second column is that one where the geometries will be stored. So, I must give it a name that I can easily identify, what its content, for example, the name geometry or geometry or shape. I will name it as shape. In this exercise, the geometries of the shape file that I want to store in the database are polygons, then in data type I select polygon, and in the storage types, I must activate not null because this type of columns can't be null. Because this is a demonstration, I will only add two more columns, 
or fields, for example, one with the name municipality and with data type as varchar, and the other with the name population and with data type as integer. For both, in the storage types I will leave all options disabled. As a note, at any moment, you can add or delete any column to this table. To finish the process, I click on Apply and then on Finish. With this, I have created a new spatial table in my SQL database. What I accomplished in the previous step, is similar to what was done for version 5.7, of my SQL. Let's see if what I created works in version 8.x. To test if the spatial table that I have created works on QGIS, I open this application and I click the Add Vector Layer button. On the window that opens, I click the option Database and After, the add button. As a note, if you do not already have a connection created to access to the content of the MySQL database, see the video where I teach how to create a connection. On the select vectors layers to add window, I can see all the spatial tables and views that are stored in my schema, the Cardo DB. As you can see, in the list there is the table that I have created on the previous step, the demo underscore spatial table. I'm going to select it the and after I click OK to open it. Now, I close the vector layers window. Let's see if everything is OK. For that, I click on toggle editing and next I click on add polygon feature to add a polygon to this spatial table. Let's draw one object. After, I'm going to save it, and, as you can see, I obtain an error message. If I click on show more, I can see that it's a problem with the SRID, or spatial reference system identifier, of the spatial table. If you are tuned and look at the layers panel, you will notice that in the layer that I opened, appears a question mark. If I click on it to see what are notifying, you will see, that it's reporting that the spatial table does not have a valid coordinate reference system. This is the little big difference, between the version 5.7 and the version 8.x, of MySQL, that I talked about at the beginning of this video. The difference stands in the fact that the last version is more demanding about the coordinate reference system. And this has a solution? Yes. Let's see how to solve it, in the next step. First, I close the project in the QGIS, then I open the MySQL Workbench, and, in Navigator, I open the schema where I store my spatial tables, which in this exercise, as the name CardoDB.
If you look carefully, in addition to my spatial tables, there is a table with the name geometry underscore columns. This table is automatically generated whenever the user stores a spatial table within a schema. To see its content, I am going to select it and open it. As you can see, this table have seven columns and several rows. About the columns, we have the table underscore catalog and the table underscore schema. They usually are filled with null reference. Next, we have the table underscore name. This one stores the name of the spatial table. The fourth, with the name geometry underscore columns, stores the name of the column of the table with the geometries. The fifth, the cured underscore dimension, refers if the spatial geometries are with two or three dimensions. The sixth, the SRID, stores the spatial reference system identifier of the table. This column is the responsible for the displaying of the lack of a coordinate reference system that we observed in QGIS on the previous step. And the last column, the type, refers the type of geometries that are stored in the geometry column. They usually could buy polygons, lines, or points. The rows of the geometry underscore columns table refers to the spatial tables stored in the schema. So, the number of rows varies on the number of spatial tables I may have stored in my schema. After this little explanation, I may now analyze the content of the geometry underscore columns table, and, as you can see, there are no row for the spatial table that I have created in the previous step. So, to solve my problem, I'll do a little trick that consists of adding a row into the table geometry underscore columns for the demo underscore spatial table. As an important note, using this method, in the SRID column, I can insert the coordinate reference system that I want as long as it's supported by the MySQL. The most recommended is to use the EPSG 3857, regarding to the WGS84 slash pseudo mercator. However, I can assign to this spatial table the coordinate reference system referring to my country, which is Portugal, so in SRID I will assign the EPSG 3763, regarding to the ETRS 89 slash Portugal TM06. The script to insert the row in the geometry underscore columns table, will looks like with this that I'm here writing. To finish the operation, just run the script and refresh the table and here's the new row that I just recorded.
Now, the demo underscore spatial table has a valid coordinate reference system. Let confirm that in the next step. To test the spatial table, I open the QGIS, and then I click the Add Vector Layer button. On the window that opens, I click the Option Database and after, the Add button. On the list that appears in Select Vectors Layers to Add Window, I'm going to select the Demo underscore Spatial Table, and I click OK to open it. Now, I close the Vector Layers window. First of all, and as you can see, the layer of the spatial table at the layers panel, don't have the notification with a question mark. So, let's see if everything is OK. For that, I click on Toggle Editing and next I click on Add Polygon feature to add a polygon to this spatial table. Now, I draw one object. After, I'm going to save it, and, as you can see, I've got a complete success. As a final note, with this demonstration, you have learned that after creating a spatial table, then you should insert into the geometry underscore columns table, a line that associates a coordinate reference system to that table. Finally, you can perform a similar exercise for the other two types of geometries, one for the lines and other to the points.